Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Smart. In the last video, we have um, this is the plan we have given of the footing layout, and in the last video, we have designed the combined footing. And now we are trying to to design the footing for these property line. That this column is lying in the property line, and it will create a eccentricity. And to reduce the eccentricity, we are designing either it by the combined footing or we can use for the strap beam footing so now we are using for the strap beam footing to reduce the eccentricity created by this footing so through the spreadsheet so let's start so we have given the problem like uh, the eccentric footing is subject to a column a we are designated it as a column a and this is our column b the column a is size having a 300 by 300 column right and having the load of 331 kilonewton and the internal column b is having a size of 300 by 300 and having a load of 520 kilonewton the load comes from the structure superstructure it will transfer to the footing and we have to design the footing and particularly in the strap if you are uh, in the edge of the footing like this the, if the case is like this the eccentricity comes then we have to either design it by the combined footing or we can use for the strap beam footing so strap beam footing are economical than combined footing then we can also go for the strap beam footing right so in our case we have given this problem that the load are given on the column a and column b and the column a footing is flush to the property line this is flushing into the property line so it will create the eccentricity right the center to center distance of the column A and B is 3.51 meter. This is the center to center distance. This column loads, this is the center to center distance is 3.51 meter. And the safe bearing capacity of the soil is 150 kilonewton per meter square. Safe bearing capacity of the soil below the footing is 150 kilonewton per meter square. I use FCK. FCK we are going to use for M20 concrete. So this is 20 newton per mm square and FI is 500 newton per mm square. In the part one we will calculate the size of the footing for these two footings this is l1 and l2 and the width of the footing and the depth of this footing and then we will design for the transverse direction then we will calculate the shear force and the bending moment diagram for the longitudinal beam that is the strap beam and it will design at as a t beam for the longitudinal reinforcement in the top and the longitudinal reinforcement in the bottom for the sagging bending moment finally we will calculate the shear reinforcement in the beam and the we will check for it the one way shear check that it will not fail in the one way shear check either in punching shear or the two way shear check and the finally we will calculate the for the bearing stress check so in the first part we will calculate only the size of the footing and the depth of the footing and the next part we will calculate the uh, design of the this footings and for the strap beam footing design so let's start we have given the fck is 20 so we can choose uh, you have to use this spreadsheet by inputting your data only these pink cells only okay so m20 is the fck value fy is 5 500 okay soil bearing capacity is 150 kilonewton per meter square center to center distance is uh, 3.51 meter 3.51 meter column a having the size is 300 and l is also 300 okay you should look on these criteria that this spreadsheet is following column b is 300 by 300 okay and the unfactored load that is on the column a is 331 kilonewton and on column b is 520 kilometer. So the self of the footing, the criteria for the self is 10% of the working load. The working load comes, uh, it will add up to 10% of this working load will give the total working load. So finally, the total working load of the column A and B comes out to be 936 kilometer, and this this is the ultimate load where we multiply it by the factor of safety of 1.5. Right? So if we are required for the area of the footing then the formula comes out to be total working load divided by the soil bearing capacity so the finally the required area is 6.24 meter square but this area consists of l1 
this is the L1 plus L2 multiply by width of the footing. So we have to assume the width of the footing. If we assume uh, the width of the footing is 1.5 meter, then after assuming the 1.5 meter, the L1 plus L2 because the L1 plus L2 into B is the area of the footing. So L1 plus L2 comes out to be 4.16 meter, right? So next thing we have to calculate the x bar that has already been calculated by this spreadsheet. So we are looking for the concept. The concept is that the CG of the column load and the CG of the footing coincide at a distance x from the center of the column B. This is the column B. So this is the CG, CG of the column load and CG of the footing should coincide to have the uniform pressure of the soil from the bottom. This concept should be satisfied. So CG of the load is W1 into X1. This is W1 into X1 is this distance 3.51 meter and W2 into X2. W2 is the load on the center of this foot column and X2 is the distance lying under this particular column load that is X2 is 0. So this, this value is 0 divide by W1 plus W2. This is W1 plus W2. So finally, this is the working load comes on the column. So finally, the x bar distance from the column B comes out to be 1.37 meter. So this distance after deducting from 3.51 meter, this comes out to be 2.14 meter from column A, center of the column A. For the uniform pressure from the bottom, we have to apply this concept. The CG of the footing area should coincide with the CG of the column load. Now we have calculated the CG of the column load. Now we have to calculate again for the CG of the area of the footing. So A1 into X1, this is A1 into X1. Now X1 is the distance from the column center of the column B to the center of this footing, right? This is the X1. A2 into X2, A2, this is the area, A2 of the footing, area into X2, divide by A1 plus A2. This is the area, A1, L1 into B1, L2 into B, right? So finally, after putting this value, we have calculated the x bar. So now we have uh, we are having a quadratic equation. Uh, how we can get this quadratic equation? This is a one is b into l one, right? B into l one, and this is x one. We have to find the distance of CG of this footing to CG of this particular column B, right? This is the x one. How we can find this x one? This is the center to center distance 3.51 meter plus half the distance of this column b by 2 in in our case 0.3 by 2 minus l1 by 2 the cg of this footing lie as l1 by 2 if you if you come on this edge after this edge we deducting minus l by 2 that is cg then we come at this particular distance so finally we find this x1 x1 this is the x1 a2 into x2 x2 is again 0 in this case right then divide by b a1 plus a2 right so this is the quadratic equation i have described in detail because we have to equate it by this cg the cg of the area of the footing equating by cg of the column load this is x bar distance so this is 1.37 after equating this, this comes out to be the quadratic equation and you do not have to do anything. The coefficient of quadratic equation like A, B and C, it will come out by default here and the values of L1, L1 comes out, two values will be there and we have to take the smaller values. It has already been taken by this spreadsheet. So it comes out to be 2.23 and what is L2? L2 is 4.16. 4.16 minus minimum of these right 4.16 minus minimum of these so it comes out to be 1.93 so l1 and l2 has been calculated area of the footing provided is 6.24 meter square correct so for example if you are changing this load to be 550 now the area comes out to be 7.85 now this is not coming here by default so we have to choose the higher dimension of the width of the footing now finally l1 and l2 comes out to be this right 
so if you are increasing this value then the area of the footing comes up to be this is l1 is 2.2 okay now you can see the value of the coefficient has been changed by default right so if you are changing the dimension 500 by 500 so all the values have been changed x bar is changed now we have to calculate the net upward pressure net upward pressure in in our case this is 300 by 300 300 by 300 and the value of this is 331 and the value of this is 520 520 so in our case 1.37 and finally this is the area of the footing and l1 l2 has been calculated by default and l2 is 1.40 is l2 so we have chosen this is 1.5 right 1.93 is the l2 so net upward pressure the net upward pressure comes from the soil is like uh, we have to calculate by this formula this formula comes out to the factored load we are not calculating the working load we are calculating add up these working load multiply this by the factor of safety 1.5 the design load it comes out in picture divide by the area provided the area we have provided gives the net upward pressure w so the load per meter width this is the weight we have chosen 1.5 meter so the load along the length per meter weight comes out to be 306.82 this is the value we will use throughout our design right so this is the ultimate loads comes on column a and column b this is the un uniform upward pressure of the footing now the depth of the footing depth of the footing we will use the transfers direction criteria because for the strap beam we will design it through the longitudinal section in the longitudinal bending and for the footing we will take it as the transverse direction and we will design in a transfer bending portion right for the beam so depth of the beam will be calculated for the critical bending moment criteria so width of the beam will maximum in size of the column if we are having the 300 by 300, 300 by 300, it will take as a 300 mm, right? And the length of the overhang portion along the transfer direction. In this direction, if we are in this direction, this is the cantilever portion, right? This is the cantilever. So how we can calculate is B total B minus this portion divided by two, you will get in this portion. So this is the 0.6. Now we can calculate the bending moment at the face column B this is the net upward pressure right into this cantilever portion by 2 so finally uh, this is the moment criteria m max is equals to mu limiting and for the coefficient we can use if you are using 500 fe 500 the coefficient is 0 0.133 right so you have to use the coefficient according to the grade of the steel so d comes out to 117 so if we are due to shear consideration we have to take the value 2 to 2.5 times so if we are taking the depth as 300 mm clear cover for the footing is 50 mm and the bar dia if we are using the bar dia of 20 mm or 16 mm right 358 is the total depth so in this part we have calculated through this spreadsheet the length of the footings two footings the width of the footing we have assumed according to the size the main concept relying on this the center cg of the column load should coincide with the cg of the footing area finally we get the quadratic equation and l1 l2 calculated by default and area of the footing provided net upward pressure we have calculated net upward pressure of the footing and the load per meter weight of the footing finally we have calculated the depth of the footing along the transverse direction because we will design the footing along the transfer direction only and the strap beam will be designed along the longitudinal directions in next part we will go for the reinforcement criteria shear force and bending movement criteria depth of the strap beam design of the strap beam along the longitudinal reinforcement 
for the top for the honging portion and for the back bottom in the sagging moment criteria shear force reinforcement will be provided the checks for one way shear and two punching shear and the bearing stress of the column so if you like this video please subscribe this channel for more food design videos for more spreadsheets like this and thanks for watching